Hi and welcome to a quick run through of SIT's Photoshop, otherwise known as 106. Um, we're just going to go through the part two, the selection tools for Photoshop. So you'll notice that I'm going to use a couple of different images. We're running on Creative Cloud and simply drag and drop the files into Photoshop and it will open up as a raw image for starters. Um, I'm just going to click open image and it will import that and give us a new layer and then same again drag and drop and OK alright so it's dropped them in as what we call smart objects now the advantage of smart objects is that if we need to we can go back and edit those as raw files so you simply double click on there and it will take us back in which gives us all that access to Adobe Camera Raw so we can adjust the exposure and we can adjust the contrast you can play with the shadows, highlights, clarity etc and I'm just going to reset that to zero because I'm reasonably happy with that the nice thing about it is you can come back later okay so the first thing that um, the assignment asks you to do is move the file around and quite literally you can grab with your mouse and move if you I don't have anything selected in the layer panel and you try and grab it, it will come up with an error. Could not use move tool because no layers are selected. It should be a good enough hint to, to be able to move it. So we can drag and move. Um, in this case, don't have to move it very much. Um, this, by the way, is a, a New Zealand falcon karere. And it happens to be my daughter holding the, the bird. Beautiful animals if you are up in um, Rotorua and want to come and have a, a look, then well worth it. Anyway, right, so we're going to transform the image. So Control T um, will bring up this panel here, and you can see it being transformable because you get these big lines coming through. Right click, and then we can flip horizontally, and that will give us our image. We'll remove it around of course with um, the image you're going to be using you need to move her around onto the, the side left hand side of the image and resize now if you just grab the corner of the image you can end up squashing things quite badly okay, control Z that will undo the action what you can do to make sure that you don't um, squash when you do resize is you hold down shift and scale and that will make sure that the image stays locked. If you grab the side and hold down shift it's not going to do anything. You see this button here, um, the, the, the cross out or the tick. When you've finished doing a move or transform you have to commit to the transform. If you don't then the image is um, not going to be editable and um, nothing else will work so yeah just make sure you click that OK button. If you don't like the move click the um, the circle with a cross and, and, and head back out. Okay, so that's the first piece. With the next section is we need to do a selection, and we're going to use a, the polygon lasso tool. Now your lasso tools are here. You've got a basic lasso tool, which you can draw around the edge, and fine if you've got one of these nice tablets that you can actually draw with, and you can draw. Um, however, if you don't then you can end up with quite a, a rough selection which isn't fantastic uh, that's all right it's workable for what we're wanting it for um, but I'll show you how to use the the actual polygon lasso tool as well so to deselect control D um, will deselect everything and if we right click and then polygon lasso tool you'll note that we can change the amount of feathering and that's how hard the edge is um, I'll show you another way of doing this a little bit later on um, that's much more convenient. This works really well if you're using um, nice solid shapes, but for organic shapes um, like birds and, um, and people, it gives you very, very hard edges and um, generally doesn't cut it out very well. So we'll just take you through, show you how to do it, and then... Um, <coughs> then we'll escape from it. Okay, so we've got our selection, and we're going to hit delete. Now, it can't edit this object because it's a smart object. So, what we're going to do to get it out of a smart object is you can go rasterize layer. Now, of course, as soon as you do this, you lose all that ability to go back and edit the raw file later, which is a pain in the neck. Um, so I am going to show you a couple of other ways of, of doing the editing that a little bit easier and um, slightly more effective. Now, <coughs> yeah, notice that I hit delete. 
and um, the delete has actually removed the wrong part of our image. So what we're going to do is go Control Z, and that backs us um, up one. If, however, we want it two steps forward and we want to go two steps back, you can hold down image Control Alt and Z, and that will step us um, back multiple times. Or you can go up here, and you can step back and step forward through your your selection process. Okay, so we've got our selection, but it's the wrong way. We want to keep this piece of the image and we want to get rid of the outside. So you can go select and then um, inverse. Now you notice how our marching ants have flipped around to the opposite side. If we hit delete, there we go. We've now got our selection being um, <laughs> the piece that we wanted to get rid of is the outside. Much better. However, still not fantastic. As you notice, we've got a huge amount of rough area of, of tree, and we've got a big mess around the tail, and I've chopped part of the tail off, and uh, yes, yes, yeah, right. Okay, not a good job. So, Control, Alt, and Z, step backwards, go all the way back, and we'll go back to here. Okay, so we're back to our image, and we've now got a smart object, and we're going to deviate entirely, pretty much, from the um, assignment, and show you a, what I think is a, a much neater way of doing it. All right, get our quick selection tool, um, Control D, so we've got nothing selected, and you can draw with that quick selection tool on parts of the image, and it will continue to select any part of the image that happens to be the same colour. Now. You can see we've run into an issue with the horses and the falcon being the same colour, and you can end up with the same problem with pieces of hair. There we go. Yep. Um, and in fact, it's got to the point that we've managed to crop the whole of the falcon off, which is not very helpful. So what you can do is you can go back and add or subtract from the selection. So we're going to change our tool to subtract and draw in the area of the falcon. And draw in the hands, beak. Now, if you want to, if we're zoomed in, which is Control Plus, and we want to move around the image, hold down the space bar, and you can slide the whole image sideways. Okay, let's see if this behaves itself. That's pretty close. It's not going to be perfect, but I'm going to show you a few ways of refining the um, the mask when we get there. Okay, so that's looking a lot better than we had. Um, still a couple of bits of falcon toes. Uh, she's not going to be happy if we take her toes off. And you can see there's a bit of shadow there that the um, where the horse is. And we're going to actually have to add that back into the image. There we go, much better selection. Okay, so control minus zooms is out. And we've got a nice selection over basically the, the whole of the animal um, and my daughter. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to layer and we're going to go to layer mask and we are going to hide the selection and you see almost immediately that's hidden the background. We've got bits of hair that aren't particularly refined, we've got edges of feathers that aren't great but it's a lot better than we had to start with. So what you can see it's created is this layer mask and if you press the backslash key you can actually get a, a red um, selection which will show you where it's got the layer mask um, and where that's come up. You'll also see potentially a very fine line down this edge and that's because the layer mask ends right at the edge of the image, which is not great. So what we can do is grab the, make sure you've got the layer mask selected, grab the fill tool, which is a paint bucket, and we've got black. So black conceals, white reveals, and we can fill in that black gap. Okay, now if we turn that layer mask off, remember backslash, it just hides what, so we can't see it, you should be able to see that we've got rid of that line. Now, this is where it's fallen down. You can still just see that line. So, grab a paintbrush, um, use the square bracket tools, and we can change the size of the paintbrush. And as long as we're painting on the mask, this will work quite nicely. And we can paint out that part of the image. Okay, that's looking much better. 
Now, um, before we go any further, we've just spotted an issue with this background. And this is something that you'll see coming up in your images quite often. It's something that you need to be aware of and be able to get rid of. You can see this slightly darker patch here. It's a dust spot. So we're going to create a new layer. And there's the new layer tool. Or you can go layer, new, layer, or shift, control, n. We'll also do it. And that's going to create as a new layer, which at the moment has nothing in it. You can see that because it's got these um, grey squares. We're going to grab the clone tool and select a point. Oops. Um, helps if I grab the clone tool and not the spot healing tool. The clone tool's there. Clone stamp. And change our brush size. Hold down Alt. And we're going to say sample that piece of the image. And then click. And the problem is nothing's happened. Why not? because at the moment it's sampling the current layer and we want the current layer and below and that will allow us to get rid of our dust spot. Having said that, dust spots are ridiculously hard to see so let's get rid of something that's an awful lot easier. The falcon. Now you see how I've managed to get the back of the wing here. The reason for that is remember it's sampling the image below. Oh, nice, tr nice trick that's um, if you want to see what changes you've done, you can change the layer visibility by clicking on the eye. Alright, so I've managed to mess that up and grabbed the wrong part, so I'm going to hold down Alt, click in a different part of the image, and paint over. So I've now got that nice blue sky without any of the, um, the falcon in the background. Having said that, because I've done it as a layer, if I want it back, I can just turn that layer mask off, and we're good to go. All right. So, we're going to get on to refining this mask a little bit more. So there are a couple of options. In fact, there are lots and lots of different ways of, of refining masks. The simplest is we can actually physically paint on the mask. And as I showed you a little while ago, we can grab a paintbrush and a colour. And if you have white, it's going to reveal. So there we go, there's a bit of a fence post coming back through. Control Z undo that. Um, and if you get black, you can get rid of the hat. Now, you'll notice that the edge of this paint is really quite feathered. Um, this becomes quite important that you can change this. Um, sometimes you'll want a very clean edge and sometimes you'll want a nice soft transition. So what you can do is you change the hardness. So a very hard image will give us a really clean circle and a slightly softer image, give you a much softer circle. And you basically change that level of hardness to what you wish. And at the same time you can change the size of the, your brush as well. Um, so a combination of, of those will allow you to get some very very fine masking work done. And we're going to zoom in and have a look at our falcon and see what we need to do here. Let's have a look around Okay, for this part of the image, it's a little bit sharp. Um, the, the edge is a little bit hard, but we will sort that out in a few minutes. It looks like we're missing the, the back end of this tail feather, which isn't fantastic. So, we've got white, and we can just paint in the edge of that tail feather. Now you note that because I've got the feathering and the hardness is fairly well down, I'm actually getting quite a soft edge. It's a little bit too soft. So what I'm going to do is change that back and we're going to change the colour to black so we're painting this out and go along and paint the edge in again. But the faster way of swapping that is X and you'll notice that the, the black and white change over here. Um, what a nice quick way of doing it. Now we have a look at that. You can see we've got a very thin piece of feather there and that's not a fantastic selection. You end up with the same problem with hairs. So what we can do is right click Refine Mask and this gives us our Refine Mask tool. And what you can do is tell the computer that you want it to go ahead and try and refine that mask. So you hold down your mouse and paint in and it will paint over the area that it wants and it will 
try and remove the pieces that it thinks are background and the bits that it thinks are foreground it will try and keep and as you can see it doesn't do an incredibly bad job of it we'll turn the mask off after we click OK and you can see it's actually given us some of that translucency um, through the through the bird and it's actually done a much better job than um, trying to do it by hand does so that's that's one quick trip um, and a lot of the Photoshop work is is this fine tuning and and looking at things fairly closely you see how there's some um, green from the background coming through here right click refine mask paint over that edge and actually we've missed and chopped off part of the bird's feather poor thing um, but we can go back and refine that edge and the computer does quite a nice job of that thank you very much and same thing down here let's have a look it's removed some of that feathering now you know how sometimes it works really well and at other times it's going to give us a semi-transparent um, image so what we can do is once we've painted that in we're happy with the general edge that we've got we go back and grab our paintbrush tool and paint that edge back in. Now you know I stuffed up and painted over the grass there so Control Z backtracks and I'll be a little bit more careful when I'm doing this. Now you know the edge is a little bit hard this time and that's because I've still got my hardness up. Pull that back a little and there we go we're, we're getting there. Um, So you can do this totally manually, paint out the individual pieces, um, and that can be quite a painstaking way of doing it. However, if you're patient, you can get a really good look um, and, and remove that really well. Sometimes the computer does it better, um, and lots of people do really enjoy getting the, the Wacom or the, the tablets where you can actually physically draw onto your um, your image. And I know that that's still not quite right because I've gone over so I'm going to change my size and change the hardness and let's see there. I've got this one sorted quite nicely but now I've just made a mess of the, um, <laughs> the inside of the rings so I have to go back and do it again. But you get the impression, the overall idea. Um, let's see how the refine mask Hopes with this. And the quite simple answer is it doesn't. I can't see the difference between the two, so we'll cancel that. Alright, so um, this image is fairly going to be fairly time consuming to, to sort out, but at least it gives you an idea of what you can do. And um, yeah, let's, get, let's just do this here again. Refine mask. Change the size of our brush. and paint in the edge of the hair and let's see how the computer does with this mm, not too bad the inside of the hair yeah that's um, not doing it so well really yep we're gonna have to go through that with a um, the paintbrush and, and actually paint out that center section. Once you do that, sometimes the computer will work out that actually that should be a gap and not somebody's hair. Um, but again, it's it's one of those fine tuning things. Um, but that hopefully gives you an idea of some of the the power of, of the masking. Um, you've got the quick mask assignment to do, um, and if you want to have a go with this, it's it's well worth doing because it does make life an awful lot easier as you go on. Um, but yeah, it's a fairly steep learning curve.